Hello, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Day 9 Daily number 360, where we learn to be a better gamer. Today, we are going through exercises about the mental checklist. Let's review what we've looked at in parts 1 and 2 before we go on to Zerg in part number 3. We've seen the skeletal structure of a number of exercises that you can create for yourself to help improve your mental checklist. And what we did throughout part one is slowly increase the amount of stuff that was on our mental checklist. And the last one of all that we did was we said money. What is the trigger when we have, when we look up and we see we have enough money? Well, that's when we actually begin to consider what our build order is. So what we did then is we looked at Protoss in part number two, and I just did a very simple three gate expand into five gate, but I wasn't really focused on the exactness of the build. I was instead focused on constantly making probes, excuse me, looking at the mini map. And most importantly, whenever I looked up and I noticed I had some money, I then did another component to my build. Or if I ended up making a mistake as we did in the second game. Ooh, when did I have enough money to be able to fix that? So great. The reason that I did uh, Terran and Protoss for parts one and two is because they're pretty similar. They're honestly quite, there's nothing too complicated, right? It, getting it down is kind of difficult and you have to be quite disciplined about making yourself do it. But Zerg suddenly throws a lot of weird stuff at you. You have overlords are a big thing. Larva injects is the biggest of all. Um, but other than that, um, Zerg is not actually so bad at all. A lot of people love to say Zerg has the hardest mechanics. Like, that's not true, right? Like, they are very unforgiving, right? Like, for instance, if you end up missing a Chrono Boost, no problem. You can just, like, get two Forges and then Chrono Boost twice, and great, you're in, you're in perfect shape again, right? But with Zerg, if you miss a Larva Inject, you feel like, yuck, things are not going to be so good. But interestingly, I want you to have the mental attitude of Zerg does not actually have that extreme of a difficulty if you can really start nailing those larva injects. It's really not bad at all, right? I definitely think that of the three races, there could be arguments for or against it. I don't care. Just make get the idea that if you can nail those injects perfectly, you'll be in good shape, right? You'll be in good shape. And yes, I see all the dissenters. Oh, you know, it's terrible. You have to inject all the time. Macroing is easy as hell as Zerg. You have all your hatches uh, to zero, and you just S Z and bam, or all your units slam out. There are things that are definitely easier for Zergs, and things that are definitely harder for Zergs. We don't worry about the sort of well, is it is it better? Is it worse? That's like going up. That's like two married people being like, I think my wife might be better than your wife. It's like who cares? Just be happy with your own wives, right? All right, here we go. Here we go. Let's pop into the game. Let me first just note right off the bat, I'm ignoring him. Screw him. Go in the corner, dick. All right? We don't want to worry about that. Similar to what we did in part one. In part one, we first just worked on SCVs. In, and then after we did that, we did, worked on just building SCVs and just building Marines. And then we did building SCVs, building Marines, and then moving the Marines. This Overlord is going to be like one of those things. We're going to integrate him in in a little bit. In a little bit, we'll end up integrating him in. Uh, but let's go ahead and um, just keep making ourselves some drones. I'm going to go ahead and build a pool right away. And then, we're actually going to be able to go to work. So here we go. Come on. Come on. Alright, cool. Now, interestingly, uh, you'll rarely ever actually be looking directly at the production timeline. Get in the corner. You'll rarely actually ever be looking at the production timeline of your um, drones. Right? Kind of like when we were Protoss, we would hit five, or excuse me, four, and we'd look down here, and we would see the progress bar. But you don't have that for Zerg, so I want you to just hit 5SD. 5SD. There's nothing wrong with just hitting 5SD like this. Sure, we can go to our Overlord at 1, 5SD, 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 and oh look, a drone came out. Idra actually just holds down SD a lot of times. So... Let's go ahead and expand. Uh, oopsie daisy, no, excuse me, we haven't even built a pool yet. Whoa, did I 
did my brain shut down there? So I did something that might seem a little bit excessive. I hotkeyed my spawning pool, right? Here is the level zero exercise I want you to do. Hotkey your spawning pool. You will never ever actually need to hit this spawning pool more than twice, but you will want to definitely be doing some checkups, right? Four, five, see, you just want to be checking up on that pool. Notice how I'm not really using my mouse, but I'm checking down here a lot. You're hearing me click a lot. A lot of those button noises are SD, are SD. I have not yet ever talked about looking at my Overlord supply. That is totally fine. That is not a problem. We are not going to talk about it in this particular instance yet. I'm going to talk about that in a little bit. But I want you to be able to do something like you check the progress meter of your spawning pool, and right when it finishes, you can hit Q right away on your hatchery and get that queen building right off the bat. Let's go ahead. And let's build some hatches around the map because we are going to need these little hatches up. Now, if you're a Zerg player and you are right now already on part three and you haven't watched part one and two, go back and do that. Go back and watch parts one and two. Because there are exercises that you can do for Zerg just from looking at those. So, for instance, I can have an army of units, like my scouting drone. I'm going to send a pair of scouting drones out. I'm going to send them out, right? I'm going to be moving here, and I'm going to be trying to constantly build workers in this process. All right, I'm going to be scouting over here, and I'm going to... Actually, I'll just send the drones to go mine over here now that I have an army. You can still do really simple things from part one with Zerg, like constantly moving in a circle while we're doing 5SD. Just trying to build those drones. 5SD, 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 5SD. Looking at the mini-map, realizing that I have some hatches here. 5SD, 5SD. 6, 6, oops, checking here, 7, 5SD. Tapping, All right, no, notice how here what I'm doing is a variant of what we saw before. Where I'm keeping my eyes here and I'm constantly building drones. I haven't even talked about queen larva injects. I'm just trying to get it sort of deep embedded in your brain that any exercise you see any race do, you can reappropriate for your own race and just make yourself do it. Perfect. So now let's talk about queens and larva injects. Let me get these two hatches started on their own respective queens. And now let's do that simple variant of the exercise with just one hatch. I'm going to ignore overlords, right? I'm just making as many overlords as I can and sending them to the corner. But now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do larva injects, drones, and I'm going to run in circles. Larva inject, drones, run in circles. And this is where the tap is very useful. Notice that I'm hitting five, and I'm just checking up on the hatch. This is actually a little easier than managing a whole lot of different... This is actually quite nice that I have one button that I need to check both my injects and the button that I need to do the macroing on. I can just hit 5, see the progress on the larva injects, and then hit 5SD to build the drones. It's actually fewer button strokes, which makes it quite convenient. So here I am, just moving my things around, and you'll see Zerg players do this a lot, especially the Korean players who have different hatches set to different hotkeys. And then once that fills up, I just go right on down. You see that when that bar filled up? I just went right on down. I'm just building drones non-stop right now. Now, if this is too hard for you, just back off and just stare at, at the watchtower. And just wait, okay? So we're going to see our progress bar filling up. We're hitting 5SD when we can, 5SD. And as that's getting close, as that's getting close, as that's getting close, 5V, click, 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 bam. Now, a lot of people just come back and hit V whenever they want. Be a little smarter than that. Rhett is an absolute genius at this. He is really good at doing this exact technique. Just tapping around. So now let's do it for three hatches and see that it's actually not hard. So here I have my guys going in circles. See how it's almost filling up, almost filling up, almost filling up. Five. What I'm going to do is I'm going to hit 5-5, five, five, inject, 6-6. Six, six, Inject. 7-7. Seven, seven. Inject. So let's go ahead and see that in action. 5-5. Five, five. Inject. 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 No big deal. 
Five, six, seven. Moving along, five, six, seven. Wait a minute. All my hatches have the exact same timing. That's so great. So now I can just go one, five, one, five. I'm going to keep making drones out of all of them. I'm going to keep making drones, keep making drones. Keep making drones. Checking. Okay. Uh-oh. It's getting close. Five, five. V, six, six, seven, seven. Now, I haven't set these rally points. Now, there's something that I didn't end up doing that actually makes things even easier for a Zerg. Um, and that is having all the hatcheries in one hotkey. Now, you'll notice that I have five as its own hotkey, six as its own hotkey, and seven as its own hotkey. And that's so I can monitor each of these independently. See, look again. Five, five, click, click, click. Not a big deal. But I don't actually want to do something like erase six and seven. What many top Korean Zergs do is they have zero as all their hatches when they really need to do something. And they'll do five, six, seven to check on these injects. And then just go zero SD when they want to make drones. Oh, cool. I just made 24 drones. All right, so I'm just hitting one five, one five, one five, and yep, not a big deal. Five six seven, just to make sure I didn't whiff any injects. Oopsie daisies, I didn't set a rally point for you. So easy. All right, Zerg macro is not actually that bad to do, as long as you're just tapping one five. All right, if you just have a dedicated hatchery for those injects. Super easy peasy. Now, I'm going to do a completely different hatchery setup that I know a lot of people do. Where they have all these queens hotkey to four. Or, no, excuse me, excuse me. They, they have all the hatches hotkeyed to four. And then they have this queen is five, this queen is six, this queen is seven. And remember before when we had the barracks? How did we check the, the, the timing for when our guy would we be done? We would just hit 4 and click. Right? So let me just show you. Like 5, 5, V, click. 6, 6, V, click. 7, 7, V, click. See, I had all my queens as different hotkeys. And then, look at how I'm going to do the tap to check. 3, click. Oopsie daisies. 4, click. 4, click. I know this is a very popular technique. That's fine, just just click on one. Hell, it's not a big deal. Oh, look, I'm almost there. Uh-oh, and... Did I hit all of them? Oopsie daisies, I missed this one. Oopsie daisies. Yeah, not that big of an issue. So I'm going to go ahead and just say, for whatever queen inject technique you do... Stick with it. You don't have to necessarily do my five, six, seven sort of thing. And that's totally okay. Now let's do some creep spreading with this queen. Not too much. I still want enough for injects. How much energy do you have? Oh, okay, you have enough for two. Good. Let's send it on back. And now let's begin doing a mental checklist again for Zerg, right? We've done some of the ultra basic stuff for Terran. Let's just reappropriate that for Zerg. Again, injecting larva, building units nonstop, and um, let's also intro. Er, okay, so moving around, injecting larva nonstop, building units nonstop, and now we're also going to introduce creep spread. Now, creep spread, you might think to yourself, is another thing on the checklist. Ugh. Zerg has extra things on their checklist. No! Creep spread is exactly the minimap, right? That is what you use the minimap for. Check the minimap. Is our creep spread doing okay? Okay, good. Now you can do that. Now you could, what you can do is be ultra super meticulous and like hot here creep tumors and check that shit all the time. You could do something like have these hotkey to like, I don't know, control 9, and then you can do like 9C and then re-hotkey this as 9. People, there are people who do this, where they'll just be moving around 5, 6, 7, 9, you know, they'll be doing this stuff, and then 
We'll keep tapping here and they'll check down there, right? That's, that's a little bit extreme for me. That might be a little bit over the top. If you want to, that's okay to do. But let's let's do it a little bit more typically. I'm just gonna go start my larva injects. Five five V five 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 seven seven. Okay, cool. So now I'm doing the tap. Now I'm doing the tap. I'm gonna check my mini map. I'm gonna do something like this. I'm gonna spread the creep a little bit. I ended up whiffing that, but that's fine. All right. Let's go ahead and build some units. Let's rally in there. Five six seven, five six seven. Oopsie daisies! I need to build some overlords. Five six seven. Looking at the mini map, just checking up on those creep, creep tumors. Not actually that difficult to check on it and just be like, "Yep, yeah, that's this hasn't really spread very far." Now I want you to just try to creep spread a little bit more. Five six seven, five six seven, five six seven. Alright, good, looking good. Now, I was doing 5, 6, 7 before, but just tap 5, because remember, 6 and 7 have the same lineup as that. So I'm just going 1, 5, 1, 5, and then I'm just checking the minimap. Just checking the minimap. So let's introduce some variety into this. I'm going to have these Zerglings just absolutely kill themselves. So that way I can free up some supply! I mean, it's such a terrible problem with supply these days. I'm sure they'll help sort it out. Alright, cool. Actually, I know a way easier way to do this. I'm gonna morph them all into Banelings and then have them suicide themselves. Yeah, that's a great way to replenish supply. Alright. Now, for any of you Zerg users who are trying to follow along with me in exercises, I want you to send some Zerglings to the center. Let's create another exercise. Create another one, and oh yeah, they're all still trying to kill that one. It's okay, you'll be all be you'll all be mainly soon. All right, good, 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 good. I'm gonna banelingify him in a moment. I also know that there's a lot of people who use the backspace technique for hatches, that's fine. The important idea is that you can tap to check out anything to your heart's desire. So now let's do the following. Constantly build stuff from our hatches. Constantly inject larva, like this. And I'm going to start giving you instructions of where to move these zerglings around in the minimap and instructions of what to do, and we're going to try to keep up with all of them. So, all right, get ready, set. All right, good. Now start moving your zerglings around. Start moving them around as best you can. Now I want you to send them up to the north. Send them up to the north. Go ahead and spread your creep. Start spreading your creep. Send them to the west for me. And look at the mini-map. Notice how as we're looking at the mini-map spreading our creep, we can look at the mini-map on our zerglings. Keep checking. Keep checking. One, five. All right, let's go ahead and make some overlords. Now move it back to the center. Now move them left. And as we're moving them to the left, get ready to sort of spread things out. Spread them out. Spread them out. Bring them back together. Bring them back together. Uh-oh, our larva injects are coming up. All right. Oops, a little bit early. All right, cool. We're still in the center. Make sure that you're trying to look at the mini map. Make sure that your creep spread is continuing along. Looking good. All right. Well, now head up to the north position. Now come back to some other zerglings that you have, and let's go ahead and build some more zerglings and rally them nearby. Now come back. Just be moving them to the left now. Move them to the left. Move them to the west. Put them back in a big bunch together, and then get ready for your larva injects because that's what we are keeping an eye on. Now, quickly morph them to Banelings if you have them. No, maybe you don't even have Banelings yet. But, you know, spread them out, spread them out, spread them out. Make a line of four Zerglings, which are incredibly hard to click on. Make sure you're still tapping five. Make sure you're still tapping five. Let's go ahead and spread that creep around. It doesn't matter if it's exactly perfect, because for now we're just trying to get used to this. All right, now let's go ahead and send these Zerglings to the left, send them to the left. Start sending them to the right and get those Larva Injects in. Come on. My second hatch is a little bit behind that other hatch. Whoops. And I don't know what happened to my other Zergling. Oh, yeah, I started sending them to the left. All right, now get ready to just start sending them leftward-wise. Let's go ahead and spread the creep around a little bit. And using the mini-map to move your units ends up being quite ultra-important for Zerg, especially because they're so fast. 
be able to click around and then just use the tap. And then I remembered that this hatch is a little bit behind, and now that timing is... Argh. I always hate it when the timing on these hatches is misaligned. I actually intentionally wait for it to sort of catch up there. But you can clearly see that we can just do some real basic stuff with um, looking at the minimap to allow us to say things like, Oh crap, I should have... Maybe I need to send some Zerglings to this base. Or, yeah, I need to send some to this top base here, or to this base over here. Oh yeah, look at the mini-map. This is going to remind me to spread creep. And remember the one thing I told you to ignore at the start of the game? Overlords! Looking at the mini-map can always be a great reminder of where you can place those overlords on the screen. So I want you to just, as you look at the mini-map, when you look at, with Zerg, the mini-map actually has a little bit more importance for just some of the basic doing of things for the creep spreading and for the overlord placement. These are sort of add-ons to things. Macroing and just building stuff, interestingly, couples with it quite nicely because look now, I have these hatches that have 57 larvae on them. And I want to macro out of them. I want to build zerglings, so I'm going to hit 0, S, Z. While I'm building these zerglings and just holding down Z, I looked down here. 0, S, V. And so while that was all going on, now I actually had the mental time to look down at the minimap. Every Zerg player must absolutely look at the minimap when he is macroing. Every single Zerg player must absolutely look at the minimap when he is building units. And that will be the big trigger for the creep and the overlords. Like, period. That's the hugely important thing. Because the funny thing is that, um, um, I played Zerg in Brood War, so when I played StarCraft II, that was actually my training, right? I have to look at the minimap when I do that. Because in Brood War, you didn't have multiple building selections. So you had to do 5SZ, 6SZ, 7SZ, 8SZ, 9SZ, 0SZ. And while I'm doing that motion, what the hell else did I have to do but look at the minimap? Oh, what am I? What can I do with this? Well, I can just reposition overlords all over the place. Oh, that is so kick-ass. Nice. In this game, you have the, just the SZ. And depending on the repeat rate of your... um. Depending on the repeat rate of your keyboard, it might fill up slower or faster. But what we have just done in, the la in today's daily, which is now officially done, is we have looked at the basically not builds, right? And we started practicing little segments of this idea of how do we start expanding our checklist and working on one thing at a time. We didn't even actually really work on supply depots explicitly, but we created this whole structure that allows us to flesh out things over time. Overlords, how do we work on these? Well, after you are really good at your larva injects and really good at spreading your creep and really good at looking at the minimap, well, hell, just start putting overlords in is another thing to do. Um, Chef, I actually... Um, think does a good job of this that like I heard him say something like yeah I'm not really working on creep spread right now I'm just trying to get some of these early mechanics out I mean I try to do it when I remember it um, but once I get good at the build then I'll really work on creep spread it's great perfect you know exactly what you're looking at uh, oh yeah people are telling me to kill all the vein lines here let's go ahead and build vein links and by the way while you're holding E to build vein links be looking at the mini map right Straightforward stuff. So let's go ahead and just take one or two questions I actually have to go. I've been doing a terrible job of keeping my dailies short lately. That They're supposed to be like 50 minutes. That's like the ideal timeline because I go live at 7.05 and I'm done by 8. But now it's like 8.31. So let's go ahead and take those questions. Yeah. Take the questions. Take the questions. Take and take and take and questions. Mm. So, endoc tri tri trinator tri en endoc and en oh indoctrinator, man, that is a butchered spelling. Day nine, wouldn't it be easier instead of having to click on your hatcheries to see when they're done? You just look at how much energy your queens have. That's another completely, totally reasonable, accurate way to do it. The idea is to integrate it into the mental checklist. The one slight concern I have about checking out queen energy is that if for some reason you had a mental blip and you were like, oh, oh crap, oh, I missed my larva inject. And now your queen has 35 energy instead of 25. It's a little harder to be watching and be like, okay, oh crap, I forgot my inject. Inject, now how much health or how much energy do you have? Or I have to wait till 40, 
three energy until it's done. It's that sort of thing that can be a little bit problematic. But uh, again, that's absolutely totally fine. It's not a big deal. Um, let's see here. Let's see here. Bum, 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 bum. People are asking me things about strategy. This was like a purely mechanics one. <laughs> What do I think about the balance? Come on, man. Come on. Ask about this. Wah. Um, legendary ZZ. This is Dear Day. Awesome. It's me. What do you think about using location hotkeys instead of hotkeying hatcheries? Um, I guess it's okay, but I still think it's more efficient to have your ha ha hatcheries hotkeyed in some regard. Everyone should use location hotkeys, though. I think that, that is super important. Um... That is ultra, ultra uh, essential. So let's just do two more ninja questions. Can you blow up those banelings really fast? Yeah, let's go ahead and do it. Yeah. All right. That was fun. <laughs> um, let me see here. Yeah, a lot a lot of Protosses and a lot of Zergs are asking about using abilities through the minimap, like Queen and Jack with the minimap, using Chrono Boost with the minimap. It's absolutely fine. And you know, this is one of those things that this a question like that actually surprises me. Because a lot of people I mean basically what you're asking is, hey, I have a method that works really well for me and has a lot of really good efficiency in practice. What do you think? It's like, well, who gives a shit what I think? You have a great reason. That sounds great. If you can accurately chrono boost, go for it. If you can accurately larva inject, go for it. I uh, have had very limited experimentation with clicking on the minimap and it seems totally good. Actually, that probably might even be the best way to do it. Um, but for this example, just went with the more explicit, this is what I do right now, and see how this this tapping, oopsie daisies, this tapping to click on the hatch allows me to be able to do something like check in, do these kinds of check-ins. And if you did something like had your queen selected like this and just go V-click, V-click, I mean, it's, it can be a little bit obnoxious because you actually have to click like on the hatchery. But you know, I, I, I personally prefer my way. Personally prefer it, but you know what? If you have something that you really like, go for it. Totally freaking go for it. And that's actually an important lesson throughout all this. I don't think I explicitly mentioned that at the start. I mean, aside from larva inject um, techniques, if you have your own hotkey setup, like you like zero for your nexus, and you like seven for your scout, and buildings to be one, two, three, and units to be four, five, six. That is totally okay. Just make sure that in these exercises, you swap out your hockey setup for what I was talking about. And the important thing is the rhythm for your hands. That's kind of the reason that, you know, like PNS get used to doing those scales, is because it warms up your hands before you actually have to sit down and play the piece. And your hands get used to having certain shapes. I know my piano teacher may have not talked as much about the shapes, but that's actually how it really felt is that if I got used to these, the way that these sort of chords would end up going, I'd be like, oh, well, okay, in this song, yeah, my hand, my hand is not scared of that. And what you want is your hands to not really be scared of what you end up thinking. I'm gonna, uh, this is the last time I'm actually going to say this. I'm actually going to go after this. Mm. Let me see here. Nom Goose says the greatest question, I think, that I've heard all night. Dear Day 9, after doing these exercises, when is a good time to take my game to the ladder? whenever you feel comfortable and kind of want to go for it, right? So, well, let me not say go for it. Make sure you're just kind of regularly making yourself step into the ladder. Yeah, I guess when you feel comfortable. Let me more so explain what I think a person should do rather than try to do a description. <laughs> what is great to do is to try to do these warm-up drills, and if you're getting bored, play a game and have some invigoration. If you're feeling scared to ladder and you're trying to cling to these drills, I would say ignore the fear and just go ahead and ladder. But um, these drills can only help. And when you do step into ladder, you will blow it, right? I guarantee when you have it down pat, 100% perfect, you'll step into ladder and you'll drop to like 70%. You're like, damn it. But you'll still be far better than you were before. Alternate. 
And again, make sure that that's clearly what you're working on. And there will be a point where you can just say to yourself, I don't even need to do independent exercises. I just need to step into the game and I can practice what I need to practice on the fly. So now that I have had a 31 minute part three, I'm gonna go, tomorrow's daily is gonna be at 10 a.m. Pacific. It's a Euro daily tomorrow because I am booked in the evening times. So I hope to see you at 10 a.m. bright and early. Yeah, it'll probably be rebroadcast at seven. I'll try to work something out, but at the very least, it'll be live at 10 a.m. Bye guys, love ya.